Okay, so um, I've been thinking about this question of, of um, inspirational teachers and, uh, and there are many, but I think um, what stands out when I think about uh, inspirational teachers is um, teachers who, can, who have seen things in me before I could see them for myself. And, um, and Sadesh Mishra stands out in my mind for that reason. And when I, when I was doing a course, I did an undergraduate in arts and then I, I, I began honours in English literature but changed my mind and went and did a master's in writing because I really wanted to practice the craft of writing. And um, Sadesh then was, was teaching the poetry in a master's unit. And it, a couple of things, I suppose, when it, he was standing in front of the group one day and he was, um, we were looking at images poetry and he was, um, he was talking about Ezra Pound's um, uh, in a station of the metro, you know, um, the apparition of these faces in the crowd, petals on a wet black bough. And he was so emotionally overcome by the by the form and the content as was I and I just thought this was I just I've, I'll become overly emotional which is hardly unusual and and not the point but perhaps the point um is that I felt at home I thought this is where you know where where I'm meant to be and then later in responding to um my critical and creative work you know Sadesh said there's a, there's a fine mind um at work here and you should go back and do traditional honours and and um and apply for a PhD. And and I had all of the, I have I have a big family and I had all of these young children and the the masters was a way for me to carve space for my writing that was non negotiable. So um, the idea of then going back and doing another four years full time, you know, I, I said, look, the only reason that I would do honours would be to get a scholarship to do a PhD. And Sadesh said, well, someone has to get it. So this combination of um, uh, seeing, recognising um, in me uh, writing and thinking when I hadn't given, you know, done that for myself yet and, um, and encouraging me. And then so many people since when Sadesh left that institution, Michael Meehan, who supervised my PhD and is just a wildly fabulous thinker about um, narrative, experimental form, um, uses, for example, the willy willy, a, a metaphor of a windstorm to um, to kind of discuss what what narrative is and can do. So and and then in everyday terms, students and um, and fellow writers who send me their work and respond to my work because they are they're my everyday teachers. Yeah. So um, I dedicate this acknowledgement to country to a dear friend, Paul Collis, an Indigenous writer and to a friendship built on what Paul, honouring Franz Fanon in black skin, white mask, calls listening fiercely, and to what I call acute listening. We're speaking the same language, of course. I pay homage to Australia's original storytellers who remind us that storytelling is about acute listening. I express my deep gratitude to Aboriginal community elders, past, in perpetuity, present and emerging. Terranalius, what a fraud. I'm deeply sorry for the damage our shameful history has inflicted upon Australia's original custodians. I live and work on what is and always was Aboriginal land, in my case, the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. <laughs> 